So it's, it's acceptable to take the other view now among economists. Al. I would like to go back to um, the policy or managerial measures that you would recommend given the concern of social equity. I think Stephen's research is very interesting, basically showing that if the public officials have these individual values that are very keen on equity, that will help, but also it could endanger. But that's still not a very institutionalized practice. And I look at all the graphs that you cite here, it's pretty depressing. Um, and if you think, okay, what's going on in this country for the past 30 years or so, we have affirmative action here, we have earned income tax credit, all those things are supposed to actually enhance equity, and yet U.S. is in the bottom of the developed world. And so, so are you suggesting that maybe those institutional policies and practices are not working and we need to have some other ways to handle it? Well, you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have housing vouchers, food stamps, uh, and on and on, all the various things we do to try to mitigate, to ameliorate uh, the effects of, of increasingly widespread inequality. Um, I think it goes a lot to the decline in strength of the union, uh, the, uh, the, the power of uh, corporate money in politics. Uh, but in terms of administrators, um, people who, and people who aspire to be administrators. Um, I, I think the best we, we can do is to say, uh, is, instead of working on policy that might mitigate uh, to, to go to work, wherever you, whatever you're doing, whatever, wherever you happen to sit, uh, to, to, to instinctively want to ask questions about fairness. Or who, who, is this a good policy? If it is a good policy, why and for whom and and i think for generations we haven't we haven't instructed people that this is a wholly acceptable way to think and act it's still still policy tends to favor those who have the power and influence in the making of that policy now in the carrying out of that policy it's the sort of story of what do you do if you're asked to administer lousy policy What's the story? I administer bad policy and I administer it badly. <laughs> Should you, or it, the point is, if you're asked to administer bad policy, should you administer it good? Or is it better to administer it badly? That was the, uh, the sort of stare, the story of Clarence Thomas when he was heading the Equal Employment Opportunities Office. He chose to he, he believed what they were doing was bad, so he therefore administered that office badly prior to his work on the court. Yes? You, you know, when you're uh, at the local level, your work is framed by um, powerful terms, powerful ideas. Uh, the market, jobs, economic development, uh, growth, all of which <coughs> push equity to the side. And if you, you know, I'm reading some of the stuff Gavint has written about framing, you can ask questions, but until we get ahead of the curve and start coming up with our own frames that are sort of truths and symbols that we can throw out there and frame the public discourse, it seems like we're always behind the curve. Um, how, how will we, how should practitioners come up with these framing terms and concepts that they can use as shorthand references to bringing equity into their work? Well, I, I think the, the, the gist of your point is that our symbols, uh, our skills at articulation uh, are problematic. Yes. And that we, we can do a whole lot better. It's the same argument you hear uh, among people who are elected officials or aspire to be elected officials. They're all looking for ways to frame their preferences better. And it seems to me you're saying, how, how could we better describe what we think and believe? Uh, and as I look back on it, I sort of wish I had not come up with the phrase social equity and had come up with some better words like justice and fairness are, are softer, uh, probably better words. But it, it 
it's not too late. Somebody can, could come along and, uh, and do very well by guiding us into some language and framework that would, would be helpful. This is the last one. The hot lunch program is waiting. It's a question for a comment in terms of the education that students receive here at KU, uh, especially in the 90s, 2000s, uh, that you and John were, where they articulate uh, public service values and efficiency, individual rights, representation, and equity. It's a very simple way of looking at those issues and the trade offs between all of those. And that really seems to resonate with graduates in the 90s and because when you know at ICMA when the students did the, the video uh, and they and they brought up you know those public service values people really I mean they believe I mean they, I don't know if believe is on the road but they really use them and even uh, I was talking with a public works official and she was talking in those terms of public service values no, I, I think there is an ins the, the things, the sort of things that draw us into, into preparing for lives in public service. Uh, those, those same instincts guide us in the direction of finding ideas like fairness and <coughs> uh, I think there's something compelling about that. And I do think that, uh, that it has influenced the generations of our graduates. Uh, but they find themselves in settings where the application of those ideas can really be a challenge and a problem. But where they may balance, they may not make because of that, may not make the strong efficiency argument, uh, make, make the efficiency argument as strong because of fairness when they're making presentation. Maybe. Or representation as strong because <coughs> of the other competing values. Yeah. And I, I think it really resonates. I, I, had, I spent some time in, uh, where were we for ICMA? Lost, not Phoenix. In Phoenix. Dreadful place. Uh, <laughs> I, I spent some time with Norton Bonaparte. Uh, Norton Bonaparte was the former city manager of Topeka and is now the city manager of Stanford, Stanford Florida, Florida, where that uh, young man was killed by a sort of vigilante, self appointed vigilante, quasi cop. Um, and he's a city manager. And uh, we talked for about a half an hour and he sort of told me how it all evolved. And, and, and I've tried to read what I could about it. And I must say, uh, he seems like the steady head there, the person who's sort of holding things together, the reliable voice, uh, looking for justice and accountability, uh, at the same time not letting the characterization of what happened sort of get out of control. Uh, and I think uh, those kinds of city managers are worth far more than we pay them. Uh, I, I was very impressed at his uh, perceptive understanding of what he was dealing with and his, his sense of when to, to, to not call a press conference or when to call a press conference and to when to protect the mayor and when not to, and all those, those calls, because boy that's a it's a tough issue, and it's an issue of justice and accountability, race, fairness. Tough issue. But that's really when you, when uh, a really instinctively good city manager pays off. Well, thank you all. Appreciate it.